What's up everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to Rebuilding Chelsea. Today we have the Season 1 End of Season Review and Off Season Special. We'll go over the season, go over the stats, go over see all the leagues, see how, it, how every other league finished, see how the Champions League finished, and then... Actually, has the Champions League finished yet? I think the Champions League's finished. Should have finished, so... Go over that, and then we'll start the off season. Look for some new players. We, I'm gonna, I already know what I'm gonna be looking for, so I'll give you a look at the team, see kind of where I'm at. Start with the new arrivals: Gabriel Enrique, sixteen and a half million, absolute bargain. Nineteen appearances, fifteen goals, six assists. What an instant impact by the now nineteen-year-old. Fantastic signing. Joe Kelly made five appearances, 7.26 average rating, so he played well. He's just a third goalkeeper. He's fine. He's whatever. He's actually Maltese now. He's taken up Malta as his nationality, which is kind of weird. Alak, obviously a buttload of money, $102 million. But he played well, 7.12 average rating. So I'm happy with that signing. I think, like I said before, I think he's the best left back in the world, or at least one of the best left backs in the world. So I think it's worthy of the money we paid. We, I think we're better off with him than we are with Alair as our only left back option, really. Lara and Marcelli, like those would have been our only left back options if we didn't bring him in. So I think it was important to bring him in. Gerald Lopez Rodriguez came in and did all right. 27 appearances, 11 goals, eight assists. So he was a fine player, fine backup option when we needed it because we didn't have a whole lot of strikers. And he could play attacking mid, and he could play on the left wing. So he's just a valuable, a very useful squad player. Unfortunately, Barcelona want him back. They want to give him a chance in the first team, so we can't loan him back in for another season. Benjamin Zegovic came in, 27 appearances, 4 goals, 8 assists. He was fine. Not as good as he was with Everton. 7.06 average rating is fine, but he was a lot better with Everton. I thought he'd do a lot better in the championship than he did, so I don't think I'll be bringing him back for another season. I just think we can probably do better, so I don't know if they'll even let me take him back. Let's see if they'll even let me take him back. Just They want to give him a chance on the first team, so we can't get him back even if we tried. Serve transfers out. Ritao is a guy that was already gone when I got here. He's played well for international, but he's 35. Fernandez is a guy I wish we wouldn't have let leave, because he's a very good striker. He's not like absolutely absurd, but he's fine as a depth striker. So, kind of annoying we left him leave, especially because I think we let him leave on a free. Patrick Robinson to Gillingham. So, he's a lower, leg, lower league kind of guy. 51 appearances, though. Played well. Deonye did not have the best performance at Arsenal. 19 appearances. Is that just for Arsenal? 11 appearances for Arsenal. Maybe 19 in all comps. Yeah, 19 in all comps for Arsenal. 6.88 in the league. So, he didn't have the most amazing season, but he was fine. 109 million though, I think it was worth it. Ben Schneider left for 63 million, and he didn't get a whole lot of game time at PSG. And when he did, he was just okay. Austin, this guy, I think that was already sold when I got here. They think we should got a higher transfer fee, but I don't think I had to play in that. I think it was already sold. Barbosa, I did sell 41 and a half million. He played okay for Leicester. He made a lot of appearances. I'm kind of surprised because he's not that amazing of a player. He would have been like our fourth center back and third right back, but. Danny Davidson had also been sold before I got here. He barely played for Celtic, so that's a good $10 million. Another couple of players that left before I got here, I believe. Well, no, I think I sold Tucker. I sold Tucker. He did not play well. He barely played for Sheffield United. When he did, he played poorly. Saji Phillip did not play a single time for Red Bull Salzburg. So, $49 million for a player that didn't play a single match? Didn't play a single match for Salzburg. Have they, has their season not started? I don't even know because I don't have it loaded, but maybe their season hasn't started yet. But yeah, that, that'd be weird if they paid $49 million for a guy who they're not going to use. Just some loans out. No huge loans. Surrealist was the biggest loan we had. You think he's going to be coming back into the first team this next season? Not as a starter, but as a backup. He played all right for sporting. And for sure they're in La Liga. Yeah, they're in La Liga. So that's a pretty good performance for a La Liga player. In terms of the results, they expected us to reach the playoffs. Wow, that's kind of a low expectation for a team that's Chelsea's quality. All they want to do is reach the playoffs, but we won the league pretty comfortably. They're very delighted. Pedro Soler is the top goal scorer with 40 
six goals. Absolute absurdity. West Brom go up, Birmingham go up, and Tranmere Rovers go up to the Premier League. I'll see who goes down a little bit later. The Champions League, they want us to reach the first knockout round, so we, we achieved what they wanted. Final position was the quarterfinal exit. Two Barcelona who went on to the final. We'll see if they won it or not. Solera is our top goal scorer again with nine goals. Super Cup we won. It wasn't important, but we beat Hertha Berlin 3-1. The FA Cup, they want us to reach the quarterfinal. We were the runners-up. Very disappointing to not win that competition, but obviously we lost to the league winners, so can't complain too much. But Carabao Cup, they didn't care, but we did win it. So that's given us European football for next season. We beat West Brom in the final 1-0. A lot of one-goal victories and barely beat Gillingham. Drew with Liverpool. Barely beat United. Barely beat Watford by one goal over the two legs, and then beat West Brom by one goal. So we just sneaked out the Carabao Cup victory. Moments to remember. Oops. Moments to remember. Our biggest win, obviously, was the 11-1 shellacking of Millwall. I wish that could have been on camera, because that was just fun to watch. Match to remember is the 6-1 win over Bristol. I don't know why they chose Bristol. I don't think they did. They didn't do particularly well, did they? They're 13th, so I don't know why that's a moment to remember, but Goal of the season is Pedro Soler's goal. A free kick from 32 yards. Let's watch it against Real Madrid. 39th minute. I don't really remember this goal. So let's see it together. See if it's worthy of goal of the season. Usually they aren't. That's a decent free kick. Let's fix the camera angle, though. We've changed the vertical scrolling for the penalties. Back to TV. That's a decent free kick. Not that far out, so I don't know if that's goal of the season, but. Might not have had very many good goals. I think we had some good goals. Players running from the halfway line and scoring, but probably should have been one of those. Reputation hasn't changed. Sponsorships went down a little bit. Obviously, broadcast revenue went down drastically. $100 million. Corporate and hospitality actually went up as, long, as well as competition prize money. Even though they won the Europa League last season, I guess because we got decently far in the Champions League. More match day commercial. A top shirt to Soler, Ring, Gavrich, actually. Wilson and Effion. Gavrich is surprising to me. How we lined up. Best li lineup, Daryl Wilson and Soler. Ring, Effion. Dawson, Zigrovich. Alak, Nicholson makes it through. And Blake, Wolf, Evasion, and Gashi. I'm surprised Diaby doesn't make it in there. Nicholson makes it in over him. But Nicholson's been good this season too, so. I think we have three really good center backs. I've won Manager of the Month for a lot of months. I don't think I won Manager of the Year. I don't know if they've given it out yet. But I don't. Fans Player of the Season, Pedro Soler. Absolutely. No question about that. Young Player of the Season, John Ring. I agree. Signing of the Season, Alak. I would have gone with. Uh, what's his name? The Brazilian. Gabriel Enrique. I would have gone with Gabriel Enrique. But I think Alak's a fine. Player for signing of the season. Goal of the season, Solaire. Top goal scorer, Solaire. 63 goals in all competitions. Most assists, John Ring. 20 assists in all competitions. Player of the match is Solaire. Average rating, Solaire. Most passes completed, Jonathan Curtis. Most overall goals by a player in a season, new record for Pedro Solaire. Most league goals by a player in a season, new, new record for Solaire. Euro Cup player of the season, John Ring. Was that for last season? Because Euro, Euro, Euro Cup is the Europa League, isn't it? And I'm pretty sure that's what they won last season. I think that's the last season one. I don't think he won that for the uh, Champions League. Your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch, and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at our end-of-season award ceremony. It was a superb season for Chelsea as they claimed the title to back up their preseason credentials. In terms of expectations, they want to play attacking, entertaining football, develop new players using the club's youth system, don't sign players over the age of 30, uh, for your contract, sign young players to develop for profit, maintain the best youth system in the world and the country, grow the club's reputation. They want a top half finish in the Premier League. I think that's doable. They want us to win the Europa Conference League. I think that's doable. Then they so they don't even want us to qualify for Europa League European football next season. They just want a top half finish. I think I can do more than that. I think I can at least get Euro Europa League football. They want us to eventually challenge for the Premier League title in twenty forty six. I think I can do that a lot quicker. So let's accept that vision. End of season team meeting. Uh, 
highest we can say is mid-table. Well done on getting the club promoted. I really think that we can get a mid-table finish next time around, provided we make the right additions to the squad. Hurt some players. Some players are pleased. I don't even know what I should have said. Maybe that was, Maybe they're always going to be mixed, but... Uh, so some people think I'm being unrealistic. I want to... I'm lowering expectations, but that's literally the most I could have offered. I couldn't say anything higher than mid-table finish. Uh, there's no reason we shouldn't be aiming to finish in the top half. There we go. That got everyone else around. Uh, final, final of the Europa Conference League. Wow. I can't, like, I literally had nothing more ambitious to say. Let's aim even higher. What the heck? FM, come on. The highest I could say is reach the final. And they got mad because I didn't say we were going to win it. When I didn't have the option to tell them whether we could have won it. I feel like that's a little broken. In terms of the squad, this is what I think is going to be our best squad for next season. There's one big hole, a box-to-box -box midfielder. I'd also consider a ball-winning midfielder here. I'd also consider a Mazala or maybe, I don't know if I want to go crazy, a Carolero. Central midfielder on support. Something like that. Just not a playmaker. Somebody that's decent defensively too, because obviously we played Muhar a lot there, and he actually played well, but he has eight marking, eight tackling, and eight positioning. I don't think he's a central midfielder in a double pivot. I just I think he needs to be an attacking mid in this system. I think he's gonna be our third string attacking mid. Well, I think he's gonna be the one that comes in if we have an injury and need a starter to come in. Cerulis is the guy I'd rather give more opportunities to off the bench. Because he's the younger player with some more potential. So I want to give him more football than I want to give Muhar. Obviously, the rest of this team kind of picks itself. Bench pretty much picks itself. There's another hole. I think we need another backup in that midfield position, too. I don't think we have anyone that can play that position at all. So I think we need two players that play the pretty similar roles to play in that position. A starter and a backup. So I'll be looking for those. I'm currently looking for those. I'm getting a lot of scouting reports out. If I had the money, something I would consider is improving our center back position. Obviously, Diaby, Blake, Diaby, Blake, and Nicholson are good players, but I think we can, they're none of them are world class. So I think we could afford to get a world class player in there and just use Diaby, Blake, and Nicholson as one of those three will be a great option as our second center back. So long term, that's what I want to do, but I don't know if I'll have the money to fix both center, center midfield positions and improve the center back position. Another position I'm considering improving is the backup right back position. Hudson is okay, but I think he's at his potential. I don't think he's going to grow any more than this. And that's this is just an okay player. I'd like a little bit better backup for a Bajon. Obviously, Diaby can play there. Uh, Jeff Singh can play there, but neither of them are really that good at right back. Diaby's okay. He's got decent attributes for a right back, so I I would probably put him there as the backup. If I had to choose a backup right back to come in for a Bajon, I'd probably be Diaby. Bring Nicholson back into the center back partnership. So I, I, we could use a backup right back. I'm happy with the backups at every other position, though. Connor's a great backup left mid. Effiong and Gavrich are great backup right mids. Maybe a backup attacking mid, but I'm okay with the, the options of Cerulis and Muhar. I think one of them will be all right as a backup. I'm pretty happy with our backup strikers. Obviously, we don't really have a backup off the bench I love. Like, Savage is okay, but he's not really the best striker. He's better as, like, an attacking midfielder or a winger. But we have Gabriel Enrique, who's good at striker. We have Wilson, who's good at striker. So they can move to the striker position if we need someone there for Solaire. I feel pretty good about the squad depth. We just need to fix that center mid position. And I've got a lot of scout reports out. We'll see how they come back. There's no one player that's really standing out to me. Obviously, I one player I'd like to get is David Myrov, the player we signed for Everton last season, pretty much. He just looks like he's like I thought then he was going to develop into the, one of the best midfielders in the world, and I still think that. And he's got good work rate and everything, so I think he could play box to box. So I don't think we're going to afford him though. They want like ninety to one hundred thirty million or something ridiculous like that. So I don't think we're going to be able to afford him. But I've got my scouts out. We'll see if I can come up with any good midfielder to sign. But 
before we get any further, let's look at the championship stats. If I can get there. Stats, team detailed. Average possession, we were third, 53%. Yellow cards, we were 16th. For a team that looks to get stuck in, that's not very many yellow cards. Quite a few red cards, though. Three red cards. 159 goals. <laughs> Nearly double second place. Absurd. Including 20 corner goals. I didn't realize we scored that many goals from corners. Expected goals, 125. So, our strikers were clinical. Best cross completion, most crosses completed, most goals from corners by a lot. 14 more than the next highest. Direct free kicks, we had 5. Indirect free kicks, we had 12. We were just set-piece monsters this season. Clear-cut chances created 80. Best conversion rate. Uh, most fouls against, most dribbles made, most dribbles per game. Possession lost almost the least. Only conceded 29 goals. Again, almost half the next team. This is just a ridiculous season. Absolutely ridiculous. Conceded two from corners. None from indirect or none from direct free kicks in the league, at least. I, we obviously conceded two in the FA Cup final. None from indirect free kicks. 24 clean sheets. Yeah, heck of a season. We didn't get the highest attendance, though. Newcastle with 52,000. That's crazy. Net transfer spend, we actually made the most money. We made $148 million. Wow, I didn't even realize we made that much money. That's impressive. Salary per annum, this is probably, yeah, double. Double the next team. It kind of showed in the, on the pitch as well. Player detailed. Yellow card, red cards. We only got one from each from a couple of different players. Didn't have the most player of the matches. Mohamed Ortega actually wins that. Pedro Soler second. Distance covered per 90. Gavrich up there. Average rating is just our team, pretty much. Goals, Soler led by 13 goals. That's actually less than I thought. Daryl Wilson third on the top leading goal scorers, so pretty cool to see two of our players there and Gabriel Enrique only been in the club since January and he's the 20th top goal scorer in the division so Lair expected 31 goals so he could scored a lot more than expected Wilson scored more than expected they're just pretty clinical strikers uh conversion rate Wilson Enrique and Soler all up there what else key passes or assists we had the second most assists, the 15 for Marcus Connor. Soler had 10. Dawson had 9. Wow. Ring must have had a lot of assists in European competition and cup competitions because he didn't he had 20 assists on the season. And over half of those were in the cup in European football. He had less than nine assists. Or nine or less assists in the season. Wow. Connor with the most assists per 90. Key passes. Connor was up there with 100 key passes. That's pretty pretty impressive for the amount of games he played. F. Young with 86. F. Young with the most key passes per 90. That makes sense. Most clear cut chances created, Marcus Connor. Marcus Connor was the better player in the league, but Ring was very good on the season as a whole. Marcus Connor, most dribbles per 90. Don't think we'll have anyone on key tackles. You never do, because never unless you're a bad team, you usually don't do that. Gashi, the least conceded, 17 goals. 0.59 goals per 90 minutes. 16 clean sheets. Tied for the most in the league. And best save percentage, 78%. Not in a not a crazy number. Like I've seen some ridiculous numbers. I've seen like high 80s before, but. He's a very good goalkeeper. I'm very happy with Gashi. I don't think I need to improve on him. Obviously, he is 30, so we need to be thinking long-term. And our backup is also 30, I think. Maybe even older. Uh, where is he? Egan Schweiler is 31, so... We need to be looking for a long-term option at goalkeeper. 
obviously Gashi still has at least like six years probably left in him, six to eight. His goalkeepers last a while. But now I'm going to skip ahead, wait for their or scout reports to come back, and then I'll join you again where we're going to be making a decision on a new central midfielder to join this team. Probably two new central midfielders to join this team. So that's it for now. I will see you in a moment. So let's see if we can find some center mids. And we are back a little bit later than I anticipated, but this transfer window has been one of the toughest I've ever had to deal with. Just so many players I've gone through trying to sign, just can't find deals, really struggled. And I struggle with some tough decisions too. So it's been a tough transfer window, but I'm actually very happy with where we're at. We're currently on the first day of the Premier League season against Bournemouth. But I'm going to show you how the leagues have uh, went for how the last year before we get into anything else. So last year, Arsenal obviously won the Premier League. City second, West Ham third, Everton fourth, Southampton, Liverpool, and Leicester in the fifth, sixth, and seventh spot. Swansea, Stoke, and Crystal Palace relegated. In the championship, that's this year. In the championship, we obviously won it. West Brom second, and Birmingham goes through in the playoffs. Wrexham, Millwall, and Plymouth relegated. Uh, if we go to Premier League overview, the Bundesliga last season, Schalke won it with 68 points. Dortmund on second with 67 points. Bayern Munich on third and 66 points. Gladbach in fourth at 65 points. Hertha at fifth with 64 points. So that's a very, very close Bundesliga table. Five teams that all could have realistically won the league in the last two matches. Bayer Leverkusen in sixth with 57 points. Hamburg and Nuremberg relegated. Look at La Liga. Won by Real Madrid on 90 points. 96 points. Quite a few, quite a Ways ahead of Barcelona are in second. Atletico Madrid and Valencia round out the Champions League spots. Social United Sporting get the Europa League spots. Valicano, Coruña, and Mallorca relegated. In Syria. Lazio win it for the second straight year. Juventus in second on the same amount of points, but Lazio win on goal difference. Inter third, Atalanta fourth. Napoli and Torino fifth and sixth. Uh, Salernitana, Spezia, and Kiev Chievo Verona relegated. Liga. Uh, Leon won it for their second straight year. Quite a bit clear, about nine points clear of PSG. Eleven points clear of PSG, who are in second. Stad Rene, third. Reims, Nice, and Marseille in fourth, fifth, and sixth. I think Marseille misses out on Europa League football because of St. Etienne winning the cup, though. That's unfortunate. Strasbourg and Strad Levallois relega uh, relegated. And Liga Nos, it was won by. There we go. That was weird. It was won by Porto. I think they've won it quite a few times in a row. If we look, oh, it's only the second time in a row, but they've won it quite a bit. Benfica won it a long time in a row when this save started. But Porto, Sporting second, Benfica third, Braga, Pacos, Pasos, Pacos, Pasos, Pas, Pacos. I don't know. De Ferreira, Victoria Guimaraes finished out the top six spots. Ferenc, Belenenses, and Gil Vicente relegated. And then finally, the Eredivisie, the last league I have loaded. Won by PSV. Second in Ajax. Barter Rotterdam actually in third. That's surprising. AZ in fourth. Volendam, Heronveen, and Go Ahead Eagles relegated. If we look at the Champions League, it was one. If we go stages, look at the last season. Quarterfinal, obviously. PSG beat Liverpool, Porto beat Benfica, we lost to Barcelona, and Southampton beat Valencia. So in the semifinal, PSG beat Porto, Barcelona beat Southampton. And in the final, Barcelona wins the Champions League by beating PSG in France, 3-1. Go to the Europa League. Uh, Europe, there it is. Go to the Europa League and go to the previous season. Quarterfinal, Man United beat Rangers. Rangers getting to the quarterfinal of the Europa League is pretty good. Arsenal beat Hertha. Sociedad beat Leverkusen. And Munich, Bayern Munich beat Schalke. In the semifinal, Bayern Munich beat Man United. And Arsenal beat Real Sociedad. So Arsenal won the league. 
They won the FA Cup, but they did not win the Europa League. Bayern Munich win the Europa League on penalties. So that's how all, all of that went down. In terms of the signings we've made, we've made two, well, yeah, we've, we've made two signings, and we're about to make a third. Unfortunately, it's not going to be here for this first game, but if we go to our transfers, our transfer history, we have signed a few players. Jose Cabreras, the youngster we signed on the free, just a little bit of potential. He's 20 determination. He's okay, just a body we need for our under-23s. We don't have a whole lot of under-23 players, so I just needed to bring in some bodies, so he came in. Let me go back. Steve Tricker, a youngster I bought for $3.9 million. That was his uh, compensation fee for Man Manchester City. He looks really good for 19 years old. Passing sucks, but that's the only thing. Everything else is pretty dang good, and he's got five-star potential, so I think he can come good for us. One of our big signings so far is Andrew Mather for 33 raising to $35.5 million. Says he's an attacking midfielder, but I'm going to play him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's got okay tackling, good technique, really, really good teamwork, vision, work rate, stamina, pace, really good physically, really good mentally, and some pretty good technicals. So I think he's going to be really good for us. I think he's better than three stars. I think he's at least three and a half, if not a four-star player. So I kind of disagree with the star rating for him. I think he's really freaking good. And he can play attacking mid and right inside forward if we need to. And our other signing for which is more money, but he's actually going to be the backup for now. But he's got a lot of potential. He's only 19 years old. Preben Busk from FC Copenhagen for 45, raising to 52 million. It says he's got four star current ability, but I don't think that is true. I think he's more of a three star player. I don't know what's going on with the star ratings, but I disagree. He's got five star potential, though. I think he's going to be really good. He can play that deep line playmaker on defend if he needs to, but I, I think he's our backup box to box midfielder. His dribbling lets him down, but that's the only thing. I think we can get away with that. So He's really the best option I had. I went looking high and low for backups and starters, and I think he was the best deal I could come down with. So he's coming in. In terms of sales, we sold Jason Monks, who's just a youngster that was in our squad, youth squad. Only Well, it says down three and a half star. He was only three star potential before when, I, when he was at our club. Really fast. Some good mentals, but... Only 9 finishing, only 10 passing, 11 composure. At 19 years old, I don't think he's ever going to make it. So to get $5.5 million from Everton, I think that's a good deal. A deal I just couldn't turn down. But no other players left the club. I don't think there's any other signings from the previous season, is there? There's one, Isaac Hall. Just a, another youngster I got in on a free. Just another warm body at center back. He's got some good men, or good physicals. So, and he's non-foreign. So a deal I kind of just had to make. Just a... You know, deal that doesn't hurt me if he doesn't turn in anything, but if he's a solid backup for me, I think that's a great signing. But the other signing we're going to make, you might have already seen it, Michelle, or Mike, Michelle, I'm guessing, Genovese, the Italian from Torino, 21 years old, looks just absurd. 18 headings, 17 marking, 18 tackling, 16 passing, 14 vision, 16 positioning, 17 technique. Some really good physicals, 18 jumping reach at six foot three. some really good mentals, 15s in almost everything. Aggression's a little bit low, but that's the only thing. I think he's going to be a stud. He looks really freaking good. It's a lot of money. It's a, like 102 million, I believe. Like half now, half later. Uh, yeah, 102 million, 50 million raising to 102 million. That's his, they put him uh, on the transfer list and that's the price I had to pay if I was going to get him. And I think we just we need a world-class center back, and that's exactly what he is. I think he's the best young center back in the world. So I'm willing to pay out the butt to bring him in. And I think our squad is set if, once he comes in. He'll probably take Diaby's spot because Joe Blake actually played better last season than Diaby did. So I think I'll replace Diaby with him and then have Diaby, Nicholson, and... Blake is my all to battle for that second string center back position. I think that's going to be really good for the team. Uh, Busk is actually he's starting this match, but Mather is going to be the starter. I think he's the better player. If we compare them, I think it's no question that Mather is the better player. Busk is a little bit better defensively, but Mather is just so good. So I think he's going to be the starter. Even though it says he's only three stars, he's going to be the starter. But for this match, 
We're playing Bournemouth. I'm not going to show it this episode, but it'll be the first game of next episode. So a little sneak peek of what the squad's going to look like. I think this is our best squad. Well, not necessarily how it's set up. I brought some backups in because I think we should be able to handle Bournemouth. So I wanted to give a few backups a little bit of football. Uh, Connor's going to come in. Busk's going to come in. Nicholson's going to come in. Other than that, it's the full strength squad. Ring is our starter. We've got a couple bids for him that were over 120 million, which is what I said I would sell him for. But and he still have that promise that a sure player sold if a bid of 120 million is received. But he didn't kick up a fuss, so I turned him down, and he didn't cry about it. Like it maybe because it wasn't 120 straight up, like it was 90 million, then like another 40 million over however many years. Maybe that's why he didn't kick up a fuss about it. But he didn't seem to mind, so. I'm going to keep turning down those offers because I really, really don't want to sell him. He's the best player at the club. So I'm going to do everything I can to keep him here. But he's the starter at left wing and if, when we're playing full strength. Mathers is starting in midfield. Blake's the starter over Nicholson. So, But we've got just amazing strength and depth. I think we've got amazing strength and depth. Like Any of these players I have, I feel like could come on and do a good job for us. I'm considering selling Curtis because he's 30 years old. I'd, I'd probably need to get a backup in for him, but if we could get anywhere close to that $60 million he's valued at, I would bite your hand off. Let's offer him out for 60 see if we get any biters. Napoli supposedly are interested, but they have not, they failed to make an offer. But I think that's about it for this episode. We've got the team ready. The team is, I think this is what we're going to play. Obviously, once I've got players in there that can play the further back positions, you know, Effiong, Ring, they can play down this position. They'll play in there, but for these guys, they don't know how to play deeper, so they're going to play the more attacking. It's going to look like a 4-2-3-1. We're going to play a box-to-box -box and a deep line playmaker on defend. This is the squad. This is what we're going with. We'll play the 4-2-4 when we really need to score, but I think I'm mostly going to be playing this. That's going to be it for the episode. If you've made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials are also in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.